Welcome to the Cool Tools Show. I'm Mark Frauenfelder, Editor-in-Chief of Cool Tools, a website of tool recommendations written by our readers. You can find us at cool-tools.org. I'm joined by my co-host, Kevin Kelly, founder of Cool Tools. Hey, Kevin. Hey, it's great to be here. In each episode of the Cool Tools Show, Kevin and I talk to a guest about some of his or her favorite uncommon and uncommonly good tools they think others should know about. Our guest this week is Mino Palouse. Mino grew up as a successful child actor in Hollywood, and his kid sister is Soleil Moon Fry of Punky Brewster fame. He then moved behind the camera and has spent his life photographing and filming the world around him, from the burning ghats of Varanasi to the luminous landscapes of Tinseltown. He's a proud papa, and ask him his profession, and he'll tell you he's a Mino, and all that might entail. He gave himself the name when he was two in Nepal. It's been an adventure of individualism and a constant search for personal experience ever since. Hey, Mino, how are you? Good, good, good. Happy to be here with you guys. It's a delight to meet you, Mino, and I'm sure we have lots to talk about given your your background in Asia. Yeah, um, falling in love with my wife, who was a, a, an inveterate traveler herself, and my parents had raised me on the road before we came back here to town. Um, we decided to run off and get married in India. And that was three months of just being deeply steeped in the madness. And yes. anyone who's ever been to India knows it can be really intense. But I realized at the end of every day, I was in this very meditative place because I would go out each day with the camera trying to distill the madness in quiet frames that contained the madness. And, and it in that kind of Buddhistic march through the sea of humanity, I, I kept such a, uh, a beatific calm. It was wonderful. Well, great. Yeah, how, that's an amazing um, achievement to do that in India. So you, you mentioned you were standing behind the camera. So tell us about one of your favorite tools in, in that respect. So, so listen, I got to say, I, I was so excited when you guys asked me to be on this because – Tools in my life are, are very important. It's, it's a hand-me-down from my dad who really dug his particular tools and, and also dug digging them, right? Um, he, he, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't about expensive things necessarily, but it was about things that mattered in your life that you would, that you would use. And he always taught me, like, if it's a tool you're going to use for business, then the expense is not really an issue. And you love these things. And, and interestingly, after he died and we were cleaning out his house, I found all these power tools unopened in their boxes from Sears that his dad had given him throughout the years. Wow. But which he had like eschewed, like he denigrated the notion of power tools and things because that was something dad liked. And that was part of their conflict. Now, it's very funny because I, as the owner of an old house, have, you know, the full complement of power tools because I got to work on it all the time. And so that, that love of tools that he handed me, I took even further. Um, but but, but so, so the, the story of tools in my life is, is intrinsic to my life. I'm, I'm a photographer and a filmmaker, and I could do hours just on all of the wild tech in film right now because cinema by dint of technology has become so democratized because the stuff has become financially approachable at all levels and as i expanded my photography career into cinematography as well it was wonderful because it was a great opportunity as my wife says to just buy a whole lot more shit <laughs> and the studio down here is a testament to it as it fills up with more boxes and interesting things. So, so tell us, give us an example of one piece that you are excited by and want to recommend. Right. So, so I, so I wanted to get to, to, to synthesize it down to like one of my favorite tools of my life. And, and I came into it last year. I'd been meaning to come to it for a long time. And I finally did it. It was finally ready for me. I was finally ready for it. And it's brilliant. It's the Leica M10. And Leica is a brilliant still camera because of it, if its ethos, because of the way it is machined and designed and implemented. The M series, which is a rangefinder camera, 
meaning when you look through it, you don't look through the lens. There is none of that beautiful syrup of shallow depth of field that you get from an SLR camera. When you look through the corner of the rangefinder, it doesn't really look any different than it does with your eye to the natural world around you. Thus, you don't necessarily pick up the camera to find the image. You find the image by walking around with your eyes open. And when you see, ah, there's my image, you pick the camera up, quickly frame it and focus it and nail it. And this, this kind of ethos of paying attention to life with this kind of camera is fantastic because it goes all the way back to some of my heroes, guys like Cartier Bresson, who walked the earth taking photos. And the, the, the implementation of this camera has not changed since then. You could still screw his lenses onto this camera and it would still work the same way. The only difference is, of course, they've swapped out celluloid for silicon. And there's a, there's a chip in there now. It's a digital camera, but it still works in a very analog fashion when you want it to. And then the beauty of it is there's a screen on the back and you can see what you're doing if you want to do it that way. Um, you set your own aperture, you set your shutter speed, you set the ISO, you, you do the things manually that you want to do, or you can set them all auto as well. It, it's, it's really genius. Um, and it, it, range finding photography forces you to, again, use your eyes, which is as a photographer, a poet with light, that, that, those eyes, boy, those are your main conduit to the art. And of course, what's genius about the M10 now is that with the implementation of technology such that it has gotten to, because Leica does its technology in very slow, small steps, whereas the other big boys are fighting it out with new issues all throughout the year and new bells and whistles. This just is clean and simple. But the one thing they did implement is a new sensor in the M10 that really keeps up with, with contemporary sensors with regard to the definition it brings you, the low light capacity it brings you. But the one thing they have had all along is Leica colors, which are just kind of exquisite once you start experiencing them. Leica colors, you mean the, the actual colors of the photographs? That... Yeah, be because when, when, you, when you're shooting a digital camera, you're dealing with raw photography, which then is processed somewhere in the pipeline. There, there's, a, there's a processing within the camera to show the picture to you on the back of it. Then there's a, a processing that you do when you bring in the raw photos into the computer. Mm -hmm. And each, each camera manufacturer implements the mathematics of their raw photography a little differently so that the programs you use kind of confront that mathematics a little differently. And thus the colors and the textures and the skin tones and the blacks and the whites all have kind of a signature. And then sometimes you find that the, the processed version that the camera's making has something genius to it, which for me now I'm realizing is brilliant because for years, you know, as a professional photographer, I bring the images into the computer to finish them and deliver them. But what I'm loving right now is bringing the images straight from the camera through the air into my devices, kind of already finished because the way that the camera's processing them is so beautiful. And then I get to post them because I, I do love social media in, in that it is a constant portfolio for me, a way to be constantly publishing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and that brings me great joy. Yes. So, so my first tool is, is my Leica M10. It is a, it's a brilliant machine. They have recently come up with the N10P, which has an even quieter shutter. So it's, it's taken what is already a quiet and nondescript camera and made it even quieter. The camera itself is beautiful. Like you can have it around your neck at all times. I, I realize when I go out without it, I feel kind of naked. You come to dinner and you can set it on the table <laughs> as a kind of a statement <laughs> that we're here and, and images may happen while we are discussing things. Uh, it's small, it's light. It, it's, it's a heavy piece of metal, but because it's so small, it's, it's light enough to carry around all the time. And, and it has interchangeable lenses, right? I mean, you can add a telephoto-ish and a wide-angle-ish to it. You can put whatever lens you want on there other than 
zoom lenses. You, right. you, you, you have to be definitive. It is, it is all about um, fixed lenses. It is all about lenses that make the, make a statement about the shot you've got. And, and it, is, it is not an easy camera to use per se. I, I guess if you use it all in auto, the only thing you'd have to do is, is focus it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have any autofocus. It doesn't have autofocus at all. Oh, okay. No, no. Uh, but but the way I use it totally manually is fantastic because then when I get the shot, I really feel that I got the shot. Right. And, and is this what you use when you're? I mean, you do a lot of like album covers for like famous recording artists and stuff. Do you? Is this the camera you use for that? Or so. So I use this as my daily camera chronicling life. I integrate it into my professional work uh, where, and when I'm doing my professional work, I'm typically shooting with my Canon, which I've had for years and I've got lots of glass for. I have recently acquired a, a, one of the little Sony mirrorlesses because that's wonderful. I love shooting that just from the screen. Like I never even bring it up to my eye. Um, and those I really do utilize the autofocus. Um, Again, they're all tools and they all have, this is the secret, they all have different souls. So the way you approach the image making is a little different because the tool is a little different. I still have this fabulous Mamiya 6, which is like a big film version of the Leica that takes medium format film, but is a rangefinder, And that's still an amazing camera to travel with. Big squares. Cool. Well, I, I I think every time I've seen you, you've definitely had the Leica with you, and you might have additional cameras as well. The the Leica is that that conversational piece again. Mm -hmm. Like when it's around your neck, you don't feel naked. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> um, so so your next pick at tool is an iPad Pro 11, and I imagine that this is kind of like a companion. Uh, well, and, and so that's that's it, right? So the, the iPad Pro is interesting because I recently got it uh, because I was I was doing a, a thing where I was uh, meeting with a bunch of people, showing off my portfolio. So instead of dragging in printed portfolios, I was going to bring in my portfolios on the screen, and I really didn't think that this machine was going to find a, any other kind of place in my life other than this use because I've owned other iPads that essentially just languish because I use my phone. The phone is so useful. It's in your pocket. It does all the things you need your phone to do. And the iPad is just a bigger phone for the most part. No, I have learned to love this machine in the past few months. Um, because again, it becomes part of my daily creative ritual. Um, with the camera, it's brilliant because I shoot the camera over into the Leica app. It, it drinks the photos right in. It, it is a much more satisfying place to to perceive your photos mm -hmm. and to fool around with them a little than on your little phone. And then I can upload them right to my Instagram, right to my Tumblr. And again, that, that the act of daily publishing, which I find so satisfying is there. I'm edified by that. So uh, do you go through Lightroom on the iPad? You know, I don't. Um, I, I, I've left Lightroom long ago when I'm, when I'm doing, the big photo editing, I use Capture. When I'm shooting tethered, I use Capture. So the Capture One has really become the basis of all my photo editing. I kind of like the, I, I, I prefer the way that it deals with raw, the way it processes the math and the way you fiddle with your photos. I, I prefer Capture One to Lightroom because I was in Lightroom from beta. Like Adobe was at my house observing me use it early on. Um, and so, so now, no, I, I bring it in and I, and for the most part, I just use the Apple photos app to give, uh, sometimes to just give a little zing to the contrast band or pick out the shadows a little bit. But it, the beauty of it is that the Leica, when you shoot it right, the photos are just kind of on the money. And, and again, that's part of this Leica color that I'm loving so much. But when you're shooting with the Canon for your professional stuff, you, you, you're just using Capture. Yeah, I use Capture so. One. Mm -hmm. And and I've devised a big part of being a professional photographer is how do you warehouse all this stuff? How do you back it up and how do you get to it again? And my systems of that have developed over years now with Capture One 
really serve me. You know, I can go back and find old photos very quickly. Mm -hmm. And and so how are you using the iPad Pro other than for display? What what are you doing with it? Right. So that's the thing, right? Is that is that it, if it were just that, it would be simply a photo tool, but it's so much more. Um, in my daily life, uh, all right. So the the chase is this: um, they have this interesting product you can put on the screen, so that when you have this new app, Apple Pencil that comes with it, it feels more like writing on paper. So I, I, I ordered that and in ordering that, the company, which is a guy in Germany, I love that <laughs> one, a company is just a guy. He sends a nice welcome letter and he says, um, listen, I, I had my sister build me a journaling PDF. I wanna turn you on to that because it's a great thing to journal. And I thought, ah, journaling, because so I can write. And, and I studied literature in college, which I took my, my degree in, um, I, I could have, consecrated my life to writing, um, but images stole me away. So I write with light, but, but words are still very important to me. Um, but the notion of journaling always seemed too prosaic to me. Like my thought is you sit down to the typer and you start letting it all spill out and you just Henry Miller it, right? You Jack Kerouac it, you just, it all floods out of you. This, this funny little PDF that he gave to his people who bought his thing is is simply, it's like a pad of paper with a calendar built into it so that you can jump around in the calendar if you wanted to. And each day is just a page. So you have like a minimal amount of space to get in your day's thoughts. And at the bottom of it, and like, I would just never do this, right? At the bottom of it, you keep a, a minder about the habits that you're trying to focus on and, and you got little smile emojis, like how did you feel today and why? And what was the weather like? And that kind of stuff, I just usually think that's crap. But turns out when you do it day by day, it, there's like a biomechanical response that's so wonderful. Like, like why did I feel good today? And then you kind of write down, well, we took a beautiful walk with my daughter who's here from college. And there's something life affirming about that. That's wonderful. And, you know, my five, my five, uh, habits that I wanted to make sure I was really dealing with this year was I wanted to make sure that I'm continually educating myself, particularly politically with what's going on in this country right now. I want to make sure I'm making imagery every day, both still imagery and motion imagery. I want to make sure that I don't ever lose my connection to literature. I don't want to lose my connection to music. And I don't want to, uh, not be active, right? You gotta, you gotta stay active every day to stay healthy, particularly as you race through middle life here. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, as I'm like checking in on what I did for those, those promises I've made for myself each day, most days I've got something I can check in about, like I'm keeping those promises. And again, that feels so wonderful. And what's what was what's the name of the um this little app? Well, so again, it's not even an app. So the the thing is, is with the pencil, you can mark up PDFs. So this is literally oh. just a PDF of a year's worth of days that you open up as a note. And oh, you have to get a note app. So I'm I'm using Notability. That's the app I'm using. Mm -hmm. But you can use it in any any app that will let you use your Apple Pencil. And so I get in bed. I've, I've uploaded a few pictures for the day, so I've kind of felt that, that completion. And then I write about the things that happened in my day, almost prosaically, right? I'm just trying to get in the things that I've done today. And you're writing out with, with a, like a pencil stylus. This is handwriting. Yes, with the Apple Pencil. That, and that's the key to like really enjoying this thing. Oh, and, and mind you, this is the key. As I can do this in bed. My wife's sleeping beside me. I don't have to have the lights on. I'm not pissing her off. I've just got it, it with, the, with the, the, the brightness turned way down and I can kind of scribble my day's design and I feel, you know, I've, I've put the day to rest and celebrated it a bit. Let's see. And if someone else wanted to, to, to get this PDF, where do they find it? Um, so again, I, I got it through the guy who sold the cover, which is called Paperlike. Paper like okay, paper we'll have a link like. to that. I'll, I'll, if I can't yeah, find it, it, I'll makes, find, ask you for it. Makes later. the screen a bit more paper like. Yeah, paper like is the cover for the iPad Pro. Yeah, it's it's just a, it's literally a screen protector, and it which has a little little bit of tooth to it. Exactly, so that you're 
So it's not like right oh, so it turns the screen to into the surface, like the surface texture of paper. Yeah, exactly. I, I found it. I'm I'm going to add a link to the show notes. Paper like for iPad. Okay, cool. Okay, and and um, is the iPad Pro in in some ways? Uh, I don't don't know my iPads that well. How, how is it better or different than say the previous iPads? Uh, the, the thing about the iPad Pro is that as an Apple product, as so many Apple products bespeak themselves, it's sexy. It is literally an iPhone 10 that's bigger. Meaning, <laughs> okay. uh, like, like you pick it up and you just swipe up. It scans your face. It opens up. There's no home button. It's just all screen. Um, I have the 11 inch, which is the bit smaller one. So now I don't have to carry my my uh, MacBook around with me if I want to be able to do computing at any moment. Mm-hmm. Because uh, as a keyboard, it, so the beauty is is that it has a cover that you can buy from Apple that uh-huh. has a keyboard built in. And and that also stands it up. All right. And does is it does it have cell connection or is it just Wi Fi? So I bought the one that's just Wi Fi because I can just hotspot it through my phone. Sure. So so Mino, just in the interest of time, I want you to talk about Open G tuning, which yeah, is so- something that I discovered a couple of years ago, and it's like what a an amazing change. Right. Okay. So like great segue, right? Uh, what does the, the 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 ability to con- to connect with the outside world so well today as you can through your iPad or your phone means you can connect to YouTube where people will teach you to do anything. My kids are like fully autodidactic, which I love because I'm autodidactic. You learn anything. Um, and of course, there's a great app called um, Tabs, which can show you note for note how to play things. Had I had these things as a kid, I'd be a rock star today instead of a photographer. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so like I've, I've got all these beautiful guitars. I've always just kind of yammered away at them. But now with the ability to really learn to play better, and of course, synaptically, my head is just stronger and more learnable than ever, the beauty of, again, age. But open G tuning means you can play every Rolling Stone song properly mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and the edification that comes with being able to strum the stone songs is gigantic. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm confused. I'm, I'm not a musician. I don't play guitar. Um, just in general, uh, is this a way that you kind of, when I think of tuning. So, again, so normally you, you tune the guitar, like is your guitar in tune? So it's just tuned to a certain set of, notes such that when you put your fingers down in different formations, you make chords, right? So open tuning is you actually tune the notes to one of those chords so that if you strum it with no fingers, you make that chord. So open G tuning, you strum it, it's a G and that is Keith Richards chord. Like so many stone songs are in the key of G because of that open tuning. Okay, so, so so just so what that means is that instead of having to make that note by holding your fingers in a certain position, you make that note just by strumming. Right, it. right. Which means that now, as you add your fingers up and down the neck, you are changing your notes. You're changing your keys, um, and you you what you end up doing is some very bluesy type playing because because open E is one of the classic. Uh, blues open tunings, particularly for slide guitar. So would you have like uh, different guitars um, tuned to different things? Or you just pick one up if you want to play? It is a great excuse for owning more guitars. (laughs) <laughs> like, 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 how many guitars are in the house now? We're like, look, they're they're all in different tunings. Like, I have <laughs> okay, I get yeah. it now. Yeah. I, I, I see oh, this. Yeah, look, look, I, 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 I see this racket to every madness. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, the, yeah, the cool thing, Kevin, is you can just like then you can just like bar all six strings on any fret, and you get a complete uh, major chord. Right. Right. So you bar with the one with your first finger and then with your second and third, you add in these little tastes and hits and all of a sudden there's brown sugar. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's like, it opens up guitar playing in, in such a a great way. I, I, I almost feel like the traditional guitar tuning was made to like make it hard to play the guitar. Oh yeah. I mean, that is, that's, that is, that's a great point. Yeah. When you're playing open, you're, you're typically making all your different chords and stuff with just two fingers. 
And then your other fingers can start doing all this little um, note picking that creates the bluesy, soulful nature. Right. Yeah. So, so, so why is, why aren't all, all guitars tuned this way then? Uh, you know, I mean, the secrets of Keith Richards have to be held in some kind of. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, Kevin. That's a really good. Does question. it make it harder to play other kinds of things? Oh, I mean, you you, you got to play songs that are designed to be in that open tuning. Um, yeah. But it's great because as you're playing it, you're like, wait a minute, there's that favorite Black Crow song of mine, and then oh, here's some John Cougar Mellencamp, and then here's you know you you stumble you you're, you stumble upon songs you're like, wait a minute, I know this song I'm playing. <laughs> I didn't write this. <laughs> Okay, great. Yeah, it's amazing. Open so, tuning, okay. So, Mina, we have one more. Uh, and, and, and by the way, this is one last thing on open tuning. So what you're saying is that there's like the gazillion YouTube sites that will tell you how to oh, do this. To- or is there, is there a, uh, one in particular that you would recommend that someone go to to learn how to do, say, open turning? There's a kid who's like a better looking, younger version of me out there who's got a great um, – <laughs> a great one called uh, Riffs in the Key of Keith Richards. And it's a fabulous intro to open G tuning. That's so cool. Oh, that sounds great. I can't wait to check that one out. Yeah, we'll have a link for that then. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Riffs and, and that's, and that's, the, it, it, that's the link you provided. Mio, yeah. So, yeah, awesome. All right. And so now my last tool is, is just to bring us full circle back again to this notion that I really get the appreciation of tools from my dad um, because it, cause it was something he appreciated was something that, you know, we found a commonality to appreciate things. Uh, when I would explain to him things about my cameras and all my dreams, he would love to listen to that. Uh, and we got to, we got that, that, that was kind of a big fundament of the end the last part of his life. Cause I was helping him through that as he kind of got sicker and older, we did a lot of hanging out and a lot of just chatting about these things. And we would geek out together about this stuff. Um, and, and one of the things that I would do as we were sitting there at his little table talking is, is I would prepare myself for his eventual demise by, by looking at his arm. And on his arm was this beautiful watch that he'd had for a long time. And I would think one day that watch will be mine. And all I will have to do to get it is give up a father. <laughs> Wow. You know, I was just trying to like work out in my head with some equanimity, this notion that this is an impermanent thing, this thing called yeah. life yeah. and not to be too upset by that, just to enjoy this now. So, so that, so we get near my birthday one year and my dad says to me, Hey, you know, I, I'd love to buy you a watch for your birthday. All right. That's, that's a great idea. So, so we go over to the, how old, how old were you? Oh, this is, um, this is, Recently. Just before he dies. This is like oh, okay. I'm sorry. Five, six years ago. Um, All right. And so, so we, take, we take a day and we go over to this little jeweler's that he liked to go to. And, and he shows me this watch that he was looking at there. And it's this watch that like is, is connected to satellites. So it'll, you know, it'll tell time wherever you are in the world. Cause he's dreaming of me traveling around the world. Like you never have to reset your watch and, I'm thinking, well, that's what the phone is for. Um, you know, and it was, it was big and ugly and way too techno. And, I, I, you know, I kind of laughed that off and said, no, nah, that's not really for me. But my daughter noticed in the case this, this red-faced watch that was like it just yelled out at you because of this amazing red face on it. And... She points that out and my dad says, oh, this is great because look, this is the same watch that I've got. It's, it's the watch that he wears, but a certain numbered edition one that's done with this special red face. And he's like, well, let's get you this. And when I see the price, I think, God, no, I don't spend that kind of money on a watch. That's crazy. And he's like, don't, come on, you're worth it. Go ahead. And I know I, I just, I, I felt too bad about the kind of cost it was. I said, let's go buy a, a lens that's something that you know, it'd be a lot cheaper and I'll get a lot more money back here. <laughs> if we did, we went over to Sammy's and I got this cool lens that I still use today. But he kept thinking about that watch. And the Friday before he was gone, I took him out. He got a haircut, got spruced up. He had a date with his girlfriend. We hung out all day. We did our kind of, you know, our palling around that we had done, gotten so good at there in those last few years. We even had a great argument where it was just a fucking Italian argument. And, uh, and he got to see that, you know, that he had passed on his Italian as well. 
and, and but we left on, on beautiful terms and you know he went off he had his date the day after that was easter and i called him up to wish him happy easter he didn't answer i figured we must be off with his girlfriend the next morning i call him up to see how he's doing he doesn't answer i think well he must be in the crapper i call him up again well maybe he's in the shower now and when i call the third time i start getting a sinking feeling so I'm on my way to a shoot, but I tell my assistant, look, we're, we're diverting. We got to make a stop here for a minute. And as we pull up to his house, the Monday paper is sitting on top of the Sunday paper and my heart just sinks. The front door's bolted. My key won't work. I got to break in through the back window. I go upstairs and there he is. He's gone. He's beside the bed and the end table is holding him up and his arm which he must have been going for to light the, the bedside table is kind of up in this gesture of victory above him. I mean, it, was a, it was a beautiful way to find him, everything, all things considered. I had to take his last portrait. And it, and it was funny. He would have loved it because he was still well quaffed. He still smelt good from, from the barbing I'd take him out for. And, and because he was kind of propped up, his head propped up on the end, end side, bedside table, his his double chin was pushed back. He just looked young and handsome and proud and just in this gentle repose with this one arm up in victory. And on the bedside table beside him was the watch with the red face. He had gone out the day before on a date with his girlfriend and he'd gotten himself the watch. Like if, he, if I wasn't going to let him get it for me, <laughs> so he could leave it to me. Oh, and wow, so whenever wow. people remark, because it's a real eye catcher and it's on my wrist all the time. And when people go, oh, that's a beautiful watch. I say, oh, that's a, there's a hell of a story behind it. <laughs> it wow. is. That is a great story. It and it, yes, it's an amazing watch. Why is, why does it have a red face? Is there like a, a an optical reason nah. for a red face? <laughs> Just <laughs> <laughs> It, it's gorgeous. Yeah, it's like a blood red. I mean, it's like yeah, it, it's a yeah, it's a serious red, and, and the rest of it's silver, so it yeah. really pops out. Well, well, Mino, this has been like a, a very memorable uh, episode for me. Hearing your not only just your descriptions of your tools, but kind of like your philosophy of life, which is really refreshing and and interesting. Well, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, we really enjoyed it, and. Um, uh, your, your storytelling is, is wonderful and um, it reminds us that there's usually a story around every tool. And if we're willing, we can tease it out and pass it on. But So thank you for that. That's it. We, we, we must recall that as we fetishize our tools, we must also use them. Hey, everybody. It's your co-host, Mark. And I wanted to let you know that we have a lot more going on here in Cool Tools than just this podcast. We have our flagship website where we review a new tool every day. That's at cool-tools.org. We also have four different newsletters. We have this podcast. We have a YouTube channel where we review tools. And if you like what you hear and see and read, the best way to help us out is by going to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash cooltools and donate at any level you wish. You can even contribute $1 a month, and, and that would mean a lot to us. The money that you give us will go towards paying for our transcribing costs, editing videos, and editing the podcast. It goes towards paying contributors who write the reviews for us. It goes towards our equipment costs, our hosting costs, and it supports our very small company of three people. This week, I wanted to give a shout out to some of our Patreon supporters who have been giving us at least $2 a month. And if you give us $2 a month, we'll give you a shout out online. And this week, I would like to thank Michael Sacochia, Molly Starr, M. Velderman, Opposable Thumbs, Pamela Cooley, Patrick Weyer, Paul Hosey, Randy Fisher, Stuart Burroughs Brand, Synaptic Sam, Therese Schwartz, Tom Hawkins, Tom Markham, what Bear, Javier Pangolin, David Lang, Eric Byers, Sean Hartley, Stephen Powell, Greg Lichtscheidt, John Hobson, Adam Bristol, Adam Naher, Anonymous, Bill Kempthorne, Bruce I. Niles, Chris Woodruff, 
C. Kolos, Daryl Flynn, Egg Fliegoff, Eric Hanschrau, Eric Hoover, Godfrey Saldana, Jay Skiles, John M. Larson, Jude Galligan, Kenneth Gilman, and Lucas Frank. Thank you very much for supporting the show, and we will see you next week.